smartphones. We're obsessed with them. We take them everywhere. Okay, now, from the beginning. They capture some of the most important moments in our lives. And for many, they help bridge the gap when you're traveling and don't feel like bringing a separate camera. Phones, through a combination of upgraded hardware and software, can now produce stunning media with a wide array of effects. Photos so good, <laughs> you could swear they came from a DSLR. But that wasn't always the case. So let's go back. Depending on who you ask, the first camera phone was released in 2000 in either South Korea or Japan. Many claim the Samsung SCH V200 was first, but it was technically a separate camera and phone housed together in one body. You couldn't send photos electronically and could only retrieve them by hooking up the phone to a computer. The Shark JSH04 was released five months later in Japan, but was the first phone to have an integrated camera. It had a 0.11 megapixel sensor and was able to send photos electronically. A 2001 BBC News article produced some interesting comments about the future of cameras and cell phones. Commenters wrote things such as, Take pictures of friendly dogs I see when I walk around. Eventually, all portable gadgets, phone, camera, palm, computer, must come together in one communications device. Put the camera on front. Then you're ready for video phone calls. Great for spying. The camera could be held against a keyhole and the images immediately sent to an interested parties. Two years later, in November of 2002, the US would get their own camera phone with the Sanyo SCP-5300. It took 640 by 480 pictures with its 0.3 megapixel sensor and had a basic flash, white balance control, self-timer, digital zoom, and various photo filters. At this point in time, camera phone sales took off. By November of 2003, only one year later, camera phone sales rivaled DVD players, reaching 80 million camera phones sold worldwide. In July of 2004, the US was introduced to the Sprint AudioVox PM8920. It had a 1.3 megapixel sensor and was the first US phone to feature photos that were 1280 by 960, which were good enough to print, at least for 2004 printing standards. April of 2005 brought the Nokia N90. This was a 2 megapixel camera that was designed to feel like a camcorder. It was the first to record video with audio and had Carl Zeiss optics, autofocus, and an LED flash. Two years later, its predecessor, the Nokia N95, could record video at VGA 640x480 at 30 frames per second with a 5 megapixel sensor, one of the first widely adopted camera phones to break the 5 megapixel barrier. Someone didn't learn their line. The LG KE850 Prada was the world's first cell phone with a touchscreen, released in May 2007. A month later, the iPhone 1 drop, which popularized the touchscreen for modern consumers. It was one of the first modern smartphones with a touchscreen instead of a physical keyboard. However, the iPhone's 2 megapixel sensor and lack of features left a lot to be desired for its camera. In fact, the cameras and cell phones would take a back seat at this point in history. Instead, manufacturers focused on interconnectivity and user experience with smartphones. The modern smartphone was well on its way. And what about the front-facing camera? In 2003, the Sony Ericsson Z1010, a small clamshell phone, was the world's first phone with a front-facing camera. But it wasn't until the popularity of the iPhone 4 released in 2010 that the public fell in love with the idea. The iPhone 4 was the first of the iPhone series to have a front-facing camera and introduced Apple's tap to focus feature. And it was at this time that the megapixel war peaked. By May of 2012, the Nokia 808 PureView phone had a 41 megapixel sensor. Yes, 41 megapixels. The phone used pixel oversampling to create high quality images at lower resolutions. It boasted a slew of professional camera features, and the 1080 30 frames per second continuous autofocus video was the first of its kind for a phone as well. Cameras were now back in focus for smartphone manufacturers and were improving with startling speeds. March 2013 brought us the HTC One M7, which had a custom image sensor branded as UltraPixel. UltraPixel technology approximately doubled the individual pixel size of its competitors, meaning increased dynamic range and superior low light capability. It also had an optical image stabilizer, its own dedicated imaging chip, HDR video recording, and slow motion video. So what did this mean? 
the public was sort of finally done with its obsession over high megapixel counts. Phone manufacturers were focusing on improving the camera's sensors and software as consumers became educated on what megapixels were and how they actually affected image quality. And it's from here that we reach the dawn of the 4K age. September of 2013 brought us the world's first smartphone with a 4K camera, the Acer Liquid S2, which had a 13 megapixel camera that captured UHD 1.4K. April 2014 brought 4K to the Samsung Galaxy S5, and the iPhone followed along in September 2015 with the iPhone 6S. So why is this an exciting time for phone photography and videography? Well, smartphone cameras are limited by the size of hardware on phones. But with software, the possibilities are endless. You could achieve a typical bokeh or the blurred background effect by using a wide open lens. But now, as we've seen with the iPhone X portrait mode, you can use the phone software to achieve a similar result. Sophisticated software can digitally alter, color correct, and create photos that increasingly look more and more like they came out of a DSLR or point and shoot camera. Steven Soderbergh, the director of Ocean's Eleven, just released his first feature film shot entirely on an iPhone and claims he wants to continue shooting films like this in the future. And that's very exciting for the future of mobile filmmaking. So that's the exhausting history of the camera phone. So let us know in the comments below how you feel about the future of smartphone camera technology and whether they'll be playing a role in your future productions, both personal and professional. I did it! <laughs> there you go. High five. Yeah. You got your line.